Welcome to the Harmon Hall Show. I'm Bryson Hall alongside my co-host, Nick Harmon. Hello. Hello. That is Nick. I am Bryson, obviously, as I just said. Um, huge weekend in sports. Not really. Um, the British Open's going on in Scotland right now. Uh, the All-Star Game happened on Tuesday. Aaron Hernandez is still under investigation for murder, and Johnny Manziel is hanging out all night. So Definitely. But first order of business is the Anderson Silva and Chris Weidman rematch. I want to know your thoughts. Uh, my thoughts are quite clear. Anderson Silva is going to come into this fight like never before. I do want to say I am quite um, surprised that the fight is not happening in New York. Uh, Dana White stated on the air that this is the biggest response, the biggest uproar, the biggest uprising he's ever heard when it comes to a response to a fight. Um, Anderson Silva, as we know, is the biggest name in the UFC, so I'm very excited for this. I mean, we saw him get jawed and now we get to see vengeance can he pull it off i think so yeah i think he comes in the fight not with his hands down by his waist this time and he comes and he means business mgm grand in vegas that's four hours away from us let's go we need to 28th little late christmas present for the Harmon and hall show december 28th wouldn't it be crazy to just see anderson silva live 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 and in the flesh In the flesh. It would be insane, dude. It would be awesome. The man is uh, on... Look, I believe he is on top of the world. Um, His cockiness, his arrogance, it got him caught. He's going to come back, dude. What were his words? I promise I'm back. I promise I'm back. With his broken English, you know? Yeah. I I got... All the faith in the world in him that he's going to win that title back from Weidman. His striking is, is superb. What What do you do when Anderson Silva is actually trying to hurt you and not trying to dodge your punches? Right. Yeah, Bruce, the Bruce Lee of MMA, he's coming back for vengeance. I don't remember any Bruce Lee movies where he lost, but uh, yeah. Well, we remember Anderson Silva's loss, though, and he remembers it. And I think that's why he comes back and just destroys Chris Weidman. I got him in the first, man. First round knockout. First round knockout. Front face kick, spinning back fist. Something, dude. Knee knee to the chest. Weidman's going to go in for a double knee to the chest. Done. Maybe he shoots him. Runs in. Just angry. Just, you'll never take my UFC record. Ever. Ever. Maybe hits him with the Shawn Michaels sweet chin music. Think of well, that would be awesome, dude. That would be awesome. Why don't you know that? Look, let's mix it up real quick and just put him like on the top of the cage and just Macho Man elbow, elbow. drop. Oh yeah, brother. Something, dude. That would be exciting. That would be great. You know what wasn't very exciting, probably to most baseball fans, was. Uh, the all-star game and I thought that it was awesome all-star game we got to see a lot of my favorite players play in the game uh Robinson Cano I got to see him get hit by a pitch right in the first inning first Dude, pitch that pitch was bogus oh man that was such a beyond gross, bogus that was such a gross sound even in live I cringe yeah that was reminiscent of Kirk Heinrich's head bouncing off the floor when LeBron ran him over yeah it was Man, I felt bad for Robinson Cano. It was just a solid Yeah, and an all-star game. This isn't even the Mets versus the Yankees. This is an all-star game. What are you thinking? Right. You could tell there was a lot of Yankee fans in the crowd because the overwhelming boos right after Cano got hit was... And drowned out that stadium. Well, I don't think you had to be an American League fan to boo at that. You know, that was just wrong. It's... The game is nothing. Like, I understand it represents who's got home series advantage in the World Series, but really, you're gonna hit Robinson Cano. Like, yeah. what? What's what's the point of hitting a batter? Like, I hope the guy got beat up in the locker room after the game. You know, that would be great. 
He probably got beat up by the media a lot. They're probably asking him a bunch of questions. I know he felt really apolog or he seemed very apologetic when they were interviewing him in the dugout after he completed his two innings of work. Uh, the the thing that happened what when he got hit, I was really surprised that they didn't have a pinch runner go out right then. So he and he goes down to first, and he's just a tough guy for doing that. I wouldn't even be able to stay in the game. I'd still probably be sitting on the couch if that happened to me. But he goes down to first, and then right after the next batter comes up, they pinch hit Pedroia, uh, which was huge. I, I wasn't expecting him to be in the game until about the third or the fourth inning. But he comes in, and then a few innings later, uh, Chris Davis, who I think is probably the leading candidate right now for the AL MVP, him and Miguel Cabrera uh, are both probably well, – Both those guys had huge games. Yeah, they did have huge games. Uh, Chris Davis, he hits that – ball that gets him on first and then Cabrera comes in and he, yeah didn't he, Cabrera like Ruby the first run he knocked in Chris Davis off that double that he hit and so the American League just they come to uh they come to bat you know right away it seems like in the third inning and our pitching was awesome up until uh Hernandez comes in after sale and gives up the first hit of the game but man we only gave up three hits to the National League so I think that's pretty awesome Chris Sale pitched he got the win he he, he he pitched his life out. Yeah. Patrick Corbin of Arizona with the loss. And uh, <laughs> Paul Goldschmidt, which we talked about in our first podcast playing All-Star Game, or sorry, our second uh, podcast uh, talking about the All-Star Game, he almost hit a home run in the eighth inning, which made me stand up off the couch because it's the only thing the National League did the whole game. Yeah, he came close. Yeah. He came he close. And actually, he hit it off the ninth because Mariano didn't allow anybody to get on in the eighth. And that was probably the highlight of the game for me is when they started playing under the Sandman. That was awesome. That was the highlight for everyone, man. Watching, realizing that this is his last All-Star game and watching him on live television, you have to appreciate what he's done for the game of baseball. Uh, his, his demeanor... I think in this All-Star game was the most open possibly that we've seen him. Um hell, I say let's open up and let's let's talk to him more. Let's get him a gig on MLB TV, you know. What a big boost to the uh you know, South American fans. I mean, to get him on on broadcast television and have him commentary some games. I mean, I think it would be – he's opening up, man. I mean, for the first time in his career, I think he's pleased to be where he's at, man. Yeah, he seemed, he seemed really happy to talk to all those guys before the game, um, you know, telling them how much it mean to him for him to get an opportunity to come into the game. And obviously, you know, for the fans and everybody that was in the stadium, you know, or watching on TV, that was a moment I'll never forget – it's the last time you'll ever see the number 42 in a all-star game ever again. Very true. And I thought, of, I, I thought of that, you know, halfway through his inning. I thought it was great that they dropped the movie on that, that Tuesday too, the same day as the all-star game, you know, thought it was, uh, I don't know. It was a great all-star game. It was great to see the American league pull the victory though. As, as you're a fan of the Red Sox, I am a fan of the White Sox. It was great to see the American league not only pull the win, but dominate that whole game, man. I mean, the national league are look, the batters in the American league, I'm telling you are much bigger, stronger, Bigger bats. They're, look, man, they're the truth, man. They're they're on on pace, man. They're I, I don't know how to explain it. But I, I believe the American League offensively is consistently better than the National League, whereas the National League's pitching is consistently better than the American League's. However, the American League pulled somewhat the upset. Yeah, I mean, what did what did the National League has won? How many games in a row? They won like three All Star games in a row, which gave them, you know, locked them up for the home field advantage. And the National Leagues took the past three World Series, so hopefully this helps the American League, whoever is going to represent the American League in the World Series, to hopefully get the American League to hoist the trophy at the end of the season. 
Well, you see who was coaching for them, and Detroit is looking to make a big stand, I think, this year. I think they very well could be the favorites for the American League to Detroit? go to the World Series. Yeah, yeah. the Detroit Tigers. Jim My Leland God. managing. My God. Prince Fielder, Miguel, again. Maybe if Verlander can get his pitching under control by the All-Star game, his, his velocity's been off this year a lot. Well, Maybe. what about Scherzer? Oh, Scherzer's playing great, man. 13-1 and one going in the All-Star break. That's Those are great numbers. Nobody's done that since 75. Moving on to other sports news, moving from baseball to the NFL, the huge, the biggest offseason story, Aaron Hernandez. Uh, we didn't get to talk about it last week. Everybody's been covering a lot, so I guess we'll get back to uh, our Aaron Hernandez coverage. This guy looks like he's just... He's done. SOL. He's going to jail. Um, Forever. What is it? The the two accomplices, they're all bickering back and forth. Um, apparently, he confessed to one of them that he admitted to, to murdering... Holden Lloyd. However, the guy was sitting in the vehicle. Apparently, all four of them were, or all five of them were in a vehicle. Or four of them, I'm sorry. All four of them were in a vehicle. Three of them get out of the vehicle. They go to relieve themselves. The guy hears gunshots. They all get back in the vehicle. They speed away. Why does Aaron Hernandez need to say, yeah, I killed him? Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make any sense at all. He admitted to the other guy that he killed him? What do you mean he admitted? The other guy was right next to him. The story does not make sense. They're all going to jail, man. Every one of them. They're going to jail. They all snitched on each other. A series of, well, what do you think is going to happen, man? I mean, you know... Where's Johnny Cochran when Aaron Hernandez needs him? <laughs> Where's Johnny football at Manning's passing camp this past weekend? That's a huge story. Look, that's the big news. Yeah, I hear it. You know, Johnny Manziel, he, I don't believe, needs to go to a Manning camp just yet. Yeah. I mean, kid, you know, he's played one year of college football. Did, Just yet. Did win the Heisman. Exactly. He needs to be himself. And a lot of what people don't understand is the kid comes from money. I mean, he is not your average college football player. He's His, his family has significant funds. I mean, what? The kid drives around in a Mercedes Benz? Yeah. I mean... He's got the put- Manning football camp. Look, if you come in and you're a freshman... And you win the Heisman Trophy of the Year. Be you, be you. What do you? Yeah. What do the Mannings have anything to yeah. do with his his football career right now? Yeah. Be late to camp. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Well, I I can understand in the sense that he shouldn't set up negotiations like that. I mean, if he's committing to go to a camp and with him being the Heisman, I mean that's a credential to your name that. 99.9% of the population does not have. So you you need to be accountable. You need to be a role model at that point. You know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of like, kids are disappointed they didn't get to meet Johnny Football. Well, I'm sure they were. And I'm sure the Mannings were a bit let down. You know, I'm sure they were excited to, to have this kid come in and work with him maybe, you know, for a day or two or for however long he would have been there. I don't know. But you can't hold it against the kid. He's still young. Um, he's still got a bright future ahead of him. And, I I mean, who cares? The, yeah. the kid's got a nightlife. We're in a new generation. I mean, it's not like he's Rob Gronkowski and just body slam. We're not watching videos <laughs> of him body slamming his friends. You know what I After mean? After a loss in really? the Super Bowl. Yeah, you know what I mean? I We're watching a kid who's young, who's living up two expectations when he's on the field as we've seen uh next season we'll we'll see what he has to bring i mean what 
this is what it is. It's summertime. There's nothing going on. And these are the topics that get brought up, man. Yeah. And I mean, you know, Johnny football feeling all this pressure, you know, from the media and everything, it ain't going to be nothing compared to the pressure he feels when Nick Saban tunes up that defense this fall and they have to play them. Now, A&M did give Alabama their, you know, probably closest run in the, uh, the regular season this past year. But I think Johnny football is a gamer. None of this other stuff matters off the field. This kid's going to strap on his chin strap this year and he's going to go out for the Aggies and he's going to try to compete for a national championship. And I know that at the end of the day, doesn't matter what appearances he makes or what kind of trouble he got into. This kid is the real deal, folks. The real deal. I believe that. I believe he'll come out. I believe he'll throw the ball accurately. I believe uh, Alab- Look, you bring up Alabama, though, and Nick Saban. And when I think of dynasties in a... Uh, league, Alabama definitely holds They're that the, title for me in college football. I, I mean, they are the they are the truth. Well, I think of any major sport, whether it be professional or not, that they are. You know, I'd put them first, being the, the you know a dynasty right now, and you know the Heat are building on being a dynasty. But right now, Alabama, they got all the hardware as far you know they got. Heisman's the past few years. They got national championships. Well, their quarterback was at the Manning camp. Well, oh, did he show up on time? Uh, McCarron? Uh, yeah. Well, well, you know, that Nick Saban, some, a lot of the reason why those kids from Alabama go in the first round all the time is because they have these kids pro ready. And that doesn't, that doesn't just mean, you know, practices or meetings and stuff like that. That means your off field duties that you have to do uh, press obligations and, so, yeah, I mean, I, I do see what you mean there. That's why Alabama is ready to play on the field or off field. You don't hear about a lot of their kids doing stuff like that. What's wrong with the 20-year-old kid wanting to go to the bar, though? Or even I've drank underage. You've drank underage. Eh, hell, we all have. We, we all have. I mean, let's be realistic. What's wrong with the kid? You know, he's having the time of his life. He's a Heisman Trophy winner. What does he need to go to the Manning football camp for? I mean, did that Manning football camp allow him to win the Heisman Trophy? Was that the the makings of the great Johnny Football? Uh, I think Cliff Kingsbury was part of the making of Johnny Football. His offensive coordinator going to Texas Tech this year, Reckham Tech. <laughs> Listen to yeah. you. Other big news this weekend is obviously the British Open. We're three rounds through the British Open, and we got Lee Westwood in first right now at three under par, and Hunter Mahan and Tiger Woods tied at second at uh, minus one. Come on, Tiger. Man, this, I, I'm I'm not going to lie. I did pick Lee Westwood to win this thing. Every year it comes to the British Open, man, and I've – He's a name that you cannot count off that list. Lee Westwood is always a competitive name when it comes to the PGA Tour. You know he's going to be... Well, when it comes to the majors, he he plays a lot of European league. That he does. That he does. But he's very accustomed to playing with the best names in the world and holding his own ground. And... uh. Tiger is right there, though, man. I mean, you can you can say you picked Lee Westwood. Um, I think a lot of people counted Tiger out of this this event. I mean, he came back strong. He kind of softened up a little bit. People, golf just changes so much, you know. But a Tiger consistently. He's coming back. He's he's becoming more of a big name. He's 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 coming back to what he's used to, and that's what I like to see. Yeah, being he at may the top not of the win. leaderboard. Yeah, he may not win, but he's there pushing guys. Right. You know what I mean? He's there and he's letting guys know I, I'm back. Yeah, I'm you Tiger I mean? Woods. I'm, I'm here. Yeah. I mean that's that's what's fun about golf, and you have to admit, like. Tiger Woods is the biggest draw in the PGA. He I is, mean, when he was out, their rating suffered. Yeah. And now, you know, with him being <clears throat> tied for second right now, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be watching. I'm going to be watching tomorrow morning. That's for sure. I'm going to be up bright and early watching the Open Championship. 
everybody's going to be watching tomorrow. Everybody wants to see what Tiger can do. Can he pull it? Can he pull it? And if he doesn't, I guarantee you that's going to be bigger news than whoever wins it. Yeah. If he doesn't pull it at this point. Well, I think if Lee Westwood wins it, it yeah, obviously it's it might still not be a huger story than Tiger Woods <clears throat> winning. Uh I know one huge story going into tomorrow with the uh, final pairings is Adam Scott and Tiger Woods. They're paired up, and you know they had that whole caddy deal that had happened last year. Very true. So I think that'll be an interesting, funny little storyline to watch. Look, man, is that any bigger than him and who was the Hispanic guys? Uh, Garcia. Uh, yeah, Sergio. Yeah, he's at two on or two over right now, right behind Phil. Well, and you know the the stuff that happened between them earlier and the fried chicken comments. You know, <laughs> I mean, look, man, Tiger doesn't get phased by stuff like that. You know what I mean? Tiger's out there on the field to play golf. I I believe he'll bring his A game, man. He wants to prove himself again. I think if Lee Westwood doesn't hold on tomorrow, uh, they're, this thing is wide open. There are 19 guys within four strokes of the lead, and I can't remember. I mean, all these names are huge. Hen- Henrik Stinson, one over. Zach Johnson, one over. Ryan Moore, one over. Angel Cabrera, one over. Adam Scott, even. Phil at two, like I said earlier. Sergio at two, two over. Uh, Westwood has a few bogeys opening up tomorrow and this thing is even more wide open than it is now so it's going to be interesting interesting golf tomorrow i can't wait to watch i can't wait to watch it i can't remember being this excited going into uh you know last round of an open championship for a long time this is probably the most excited we're going to be all summer long yeah and I, thank god it's over in a month and man, month and a half i can't I can't wait for that football to get snapped. Oh, most definitely. Uh, Camps football. are looking good. Camps are looking good. Camps starting here in a few days. We'll see. We'll see who all reports out there. Uh, we'll be reporting in here. That's for sure. We'll be. We'll be letting you know of all the updates. Everything you're going to need to know for football this year. That's for sure. Come listen to us for football. Anything this fall, stick with us for the summertime. It's a long haul. It is a long haul. And a little Harmon. All right. Uh, and, you know, summer, like I said, really slow. We're getting back into the swing of baseball, uh, ending up the season right before the playoffs start and all the pennant races are just heating up right now. So we'll be here through training camp, preseason, start of college football. Check us out every week on YouTube, Harmon and Hall Show. You can check us out on Facebook, too, uh, facebook.com slash Harmon and Hall Show. Add yeah, what us. about the races? Oh, there, oh, there's no races this weekend. It's just the Nationwides tomorrow from Chicago. So we know that the uh, you know Kyle Busch is probably going to win that race. Probably. But it's, from, it's, a nationwide. it's from your home area, Chicagoland. Hey, Chicago Speedway. We got it down. we got the Indianapolis. Let's hope nobody gets shot. Right, <laughs> we got the Indianapolis uh, race next week with Jimmy Johnson still going in as the points leader. So Jimmy. we'll see what happens at the Brickyard. Uh, we got we had the uh, the open wheel guys out there for the 500 a few months ago. So we get the stock cars back in there, rubbing and racing. Uh, I love it, love it, love it, love it. Loves- I, I love that I have fifty dollars on Jimmy. Matt Kenseth, you're letting me down, man. You need to get back in there. That's uh, that's about all that's happening this week in sports. We'll be here to cover anything else that happens from now in between our next podcast. But, folks, we got football, like I said, coming up. We got this baseball pennant race. And we got the Open Championship tomorrow, so I will be glued to the television. That's all for this week. I'm Bryson Hall. I'm Nick Harmon. And we're out. Peace.